Good morning, class. My name is Yusuf Aleshinloy Abbas. Um, your instructor uh, for the course uh, CSE 200, which is titled Introduction to Computer. Um, so today is uh, an introductory class. So I'm going to give you a, a general overview of what the course entails and what you need to know uh, with respect to the course. Um, as we all know, as students, it is uh, mandatory that you need to attend the class. And uh, there are certain uh, part of your continuous assessment that is allocated to attendance. So I'm from the Department of Computer Science. Um, um, my email uh, is there shown on the, on, on the slide. My contact details are there. I operate an open door uh, policy. So you can see me within the university premises from Monday to uh, Thursday. Uh, so the general overview of the course, basically the general overview of this course is to, for us to understand uh, the concept of computing generally. So we're going to go from the definition of computer, uh, computer as a system uh, to, to the historical background of computing. And at, towards the end of the class, we're also going to see how the computer system um, does its manipulation, dot data conversion, dot processing, and the rest. So basically, that's what uh, the course is all about. So the course outline is shown uh, on, on the slide. So you, we go through the definition of the computer. We go through the definition. The definition of computer, simple computer model, what are the basic functional components of the computer system. Um, we'll look at the various components. And as we all know, the computer system, being an electronic device, is divided into several components. So you have the input component, you have the output component, you have the processing component. All of these are some of the things we're going to capture in this particular course. So we looked at the, the types of computer based on the kind of data they process. Uh, we also look at types of computer based on uh, their size and the type of computer based on the purpose of uh, their usage. Then we also looked at the concept of data and information um, manipulation. So how does the computer understand what we humans try to feed onto it? So like we all know, because the computer system is an electronic device, so the computer system does not understand the human language. So how does the computer system relate with us as individuals or as human? So these are some of the things we're going to look at in this particular course. And later on, towards the end of the course, we're going to also look at the, 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 the various components of human endeavor where computer systems are applicable. So we're going to look at the concept of computer in society. For those in business administration, how do they use computer system? For those in medicine, how do they use the computer system? For those in engineering, of what uses the computer system to them in their day-to-day -day, uh, activities? So um, my reference material will be uh, the, the Center for Distant Learning um, material, which is CSE 200, and is manufactured or produced by the University Press. And I'm also use, going to be using a text called, uh, titled Introduction to Computer Science. It's the first edition, and the author is Perry Doham. So, these are some of uh, my uh, resources, uh, resource reference point. And I'm also going to be using some online materials as well. And I will ensure to provide you with those um, URL, uh, the website of those materials that I'm making use in this particular course. OK, our mode of assessment. Now, as you know, as you all know, as students, it is expected of you to have certain uh, percentage of attendance in, in the class. So, and the university has its own regulation with respect to um, attendance. So if you don't meet that particular threshold, you will not be allowed to take your continuous assessment or you will not even be allowed to take the final exam. So the continuous assessment is going to form 30% of your, fin uh, of your uh, final grade, while the remaining 70% is going to come from um, the, the final examination. Now, so as is allotted here, so you have 5% for attendance. Um, the chat and discussion, for example, as the class goes on, we're going to see a situation whereby we want to get you guys involved as well so that I might, you might choose to post some questions and I'll try to respond to those questions. So your, your participation in the chat room will account for 10%. And the assignment and the CBT platform that we're going to be using too will also account for 15%. And your final examination is 70%. So that amounts to 100%. So I will advise that you take the, um, the requirement that those these criteria, these um, uh, activities, very very serious because they will amount to whether you pass the exam or you fail this particular uh, course. Now we all know that absenteeism is not allowed in the university regulation, so we we'll encourage you to be part of the class. And um, uh, then you 
examinator malpractice also is also uh, frowned at in, in the university community. So we ensure we we'll, we'll encourage you to uh, be yourself, do the best you can. If you need help, reach out to the lecturers and we'll always be ready uh, to assist you. Now, so the content of today's discussion or the, today's class is going to be, the, we're going to look at the definition of computer. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the simple computer model, like I said earlier on from my um, introduction. We're also going to look at the various components of the computer system. So we're going to look at it from the di types of computers, the various classification of computers. So, and at the end of the class, we expect you to be able to define what a computer system is, explain the classification of a computer system. Now, the word computer was used long before modern definition uh, of a mean. It's mean so it's, 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 it's a word that we, we, we use. Now, computing generally does, goes beyond the use of computer. It's computing generally spars all um, human endeavor. It simply means it is the use of computer system to be able to satisfy our own immediate need. For those in genomics, for those in medicine, they use computer system maybe to capture um, images. For those in engineering, they use computer system for the purpose of simulation. And it simply means that this computer system is being fed some set of um, input data, and the data is being processed over time, and they have their meaningful uh, information. So the definition of computer system does not actually limit, uh, is not limited to a particular uh, uh, sector or a particular field of human endeavor. So the gener definition of computer system can be generic. So you could simply define a computer system as basically a component or a device that accepts data, process the data, and give a meaningful uh, output. So, so we said, therefore, a computer system has come to be a synonym, uh, synonymous to, uh, with a device that computes. So for those in engineering, they use computer system to compute. For those in mathematics, they do some simulation with the help of computer system. For those in metrological centers, they use computer system to actually predict the, the, the atmospheric condition of, uh, of, of, of the day. The, for those in, um, like I said, for those in medicine, they actually use computer system maybe for your x-ray purposes, for genomics and the rest. So computer system goes spread uh, across every field of human endeavor that I can ever imagine. So with the, ability, uh, with the ability to perform a multitude of tasks, a computer is regarded as general purpose or, um, or specific purpose kind of computer because our day -to -day, in our day-to-day -day activity, we use, a comp we use computer system. Now, some of us use computer system for the purpose of um, maybe for PowerPoint presentation, like, as I'm using it at the, at the moment. But, um, some persons will use computer system to perform some simulation. Maybe it has to do with um, uh, traffic management. Some will use um, computer system to monitor the airspace. Some will use computer system to even actually even try to check what goes on beyond the, uh, uh, the atmosphere itself. So computer system the use of it span different fields of human endeavor. It's not limited to a particular field. So we've come to use computer system. Computer system has come to stay with us. So in our day-to-day -day activity, we use computer system. Even our smartphone is a mini computer system that we are holding. So a com computing here includes mathematical computing as well as logic-based uh, logic tasks. So we use computer system to perform logic for those in the field of logic. So you, they try to come up with a true table to determine whether a statement is false or a statement is true. So we use computer system to even do some mathematical simulation as it were. So for those in mathematics, they use it for simulation purpose. So as the modern definition suggests, a computer must be capable of retrieving, processing, and storing data or information. So to that extent, we can simply define a computer system to be an electronic device. Electronic in the sense that it makes use of electricity. Now, what does it do? It accepts impute data. Then we'll now ask ourselves, what does it do with the input data? It processes the given data under a given program control. And at the end, what do we expect? We expect the computer system to give us what a meaningful information as output. So tip, a typical stage that a computer system will go through is that it will go through the input stage, it will go through the process stage, and it will go through the output stage. I was going to see on later on in this particular class. So to perform a, a task, we must identify data, stroke information associated with the task, and provide clear guidelines, hence proper set of instruction for tax to be solved on the computer system. So for example, if I need to do some data analytics or data analysis as the case may be, you need to feed the computer system with some set of data. Now, depending on the kind of procedures you want to perform, the computer will, those procedures are the, def, uh, are the set of instructions that you're going to pass on to the computer system to, to work on those, part of, uh, those set of data. Now, it is expected that the computer system at long run is going to give you a meaningful information. So for example, if I have 
to plot um, uh, a pie chart that has to do with the ages of students, or I want to know the demography of um, students in University of Abuja. Um, maybe part of one of the variables I required is the age. So I want to know, okay, within the age group of maybe um, 10 to 20, how many students do we have across all departments? Within the age of uh, 20 to 30, how many um, students do, ha do we have across department? So, and for you to be able to do that, all you need to do, get, get this data, maybe using a questionnaire, as the case may be, or maybe using an interview as a fact-finding technique, then we now use this data, we feed this data onto the computer system, depending on the kind of application we're using at that point in time. So a typical application that we could use could be a spreadsheet application. So we feed this data set into, the, uh, into this application, and at the end, we should be able to have a good representation of those particular data set, and that's what we need to do with computer system. So with computer system, you need to feed in data into it. The data will be processed under a given program control, under a given instruction, then at the end, we we'll expect to, the computer system to give us a meaningful information or uh, output. So, um, so for us to now be able to do this, we need to do this with some set of defined uh, steps. Now, this defined step is what we call algorithm. Now, what is an algorithm? We said an algorithm is a finite set of instruction. Finite in the sense that um, you can count the number of steps to achieve that particular task. So, it's a finite set of instruction that computer system follow in order to execute a given task. For example, if I could ask you, uh, what is, can you write the, a simple algorithm maybe to prepare a cup of tea or a simple algorithm to compute the sum of two numbers? Now, in the case of sum of two numbers, all I need from you is just to give me the steps that are required in computing the sum of two numbers. So a typical response from you could be, oh, maybe we'll start, then we'll get the two numbers, then we'll ask ourselves, what do we want to do with these two numbers? Oh, we want to do summation. We'll add the two numbers together. And at the end of our summation, the computer system, we're going to have a result. And that result will be displayed for us to see. And we'll come to, to an end. Now, if you count this number of steps, you find out that I've only been able to compute the sum of these two numbers using um, possibly five steps. Or I ask you, what does it take you? Can you outline the steps in making a cup of tea? Or you need to tell me, oh, if it is, depending on the nature of the tea, if it is a cold tea, if it's a very chilled tea or a very hot tea, you say, okay, you get water, depending on the nature of the water, you, you get maybe the sachet of tea, um, stir it for a while, maybe add some um, other things that you require into it, maybe sugar, milk, and the rest. And yeah, you can serve the person that required with uh, that tea. You serve the person. And these are all outlined. That's why we said an algorithm is a, set of, is a finite set of instruction. Finite in the sense that you can count the number of steps that you need to execute a particular instruction. So, and the computer adhere to this. And later on in this particular um, class, we're going to see how we can use algorithm to solve problem. So we're going to look at algorithm from the point of um, pseudocode, which is more or less like a false code, or is, is, us, is a method whereby you express your, the steps that are required in solving a particular problem using English language. Then later on, we we'll also try to also look at another approach or another method of algorithm, which is flowchart which is also a pictorial representation of steps. Those steps that you've outlined using English language, then you find a pictorial representation to represent, uh, to, that would depict each of those steps. And we use that to also um, execute instructions. So these are more are some of the things we're going to see later on in this particular uh, class. So more specifically, an algorithm is a sequence of instruction needed to perform a task. So irrespective of any task that you want to perform, you can come up with an algorithm. You can come up with a predefined steps that are required. It is these predefined steps that will now convert into um, a programming language that the computer system can relate to it, and the computer system will be able to execute it uh, for us. Okay, now, as for the classification of computers, we can classify computers into three uh, basic categories. So the first one is um, based on um, the, their type. So computers are classified based on type. So when we talk about type, we are talking about analog computer, digital computer and hybrid computer. So when you classify computer based on the type, is it digital, analog, or hybrid? I'm going to see what they uh, are later on in the class. And we can also cap categorize computer based on the purpose. Purpose in the sense that of what, do you, what are you using the computer system for at that point in time? What, are you, what, what end result did you want to get from the computer system? 
what is the capability or the capacity of this particular computer? What can the computer do for you based on purpose? We're going to classify the computer system. So we're going to classify them as, uh, as special purpose and general purpose computers. So, and lastly, we're also going to categorize the computer system based on size. So we're going to look at it based on the size. Some computer system can even occupy this entire uh, studio. A, com a typical computer system like a mainframe system can occupy this entire studio. It, and a typical computer system could be as minute as your PDA or as small as your smartphone. So we're going to look at this um, the, uh, category, uh, the types of computer based on size as well. Now, this particular image actually depicts the, uh, the various uh, classification I, um, I tried to explain. So you have classification based on size, you have the supercomputer, uh, the main frame computer, the mini computer and the micro computer. Then as for the purpose of usage, you have the general purpose computer and the uh, special purpose computer. And with respect to the type, like I alluded to earlier on, we have the analog computer, the digital computer, and as well as the hybrid computer. Now we're going to take our time to now explain each of uh, these um, types of classification of computer. Now the first classification is the classification based on type. Now, the analog computer, we said that an analog computer performs tasks using what? Continuous data. It simply means that an analog computer is a type of computer that has the capability or the capacity to be able to process data that are continuous in nature. Now, you ask yourself, what are those data that are continuous in nature? A typical example of a data that is continuous in nature or uh, is continuous in nature could be um, the normal daily temperature. So the normal daily temperature is continuous. You, are, you agree with me or attest with me that in the early days of, in the earlier hours of the day, the temperature is, um, uh, is not on the high side. But anything from 12 noon, anything from 12 noon, you find out that the temperature is on the high side. Now, a device or a computer that track this particular variation in temperature is a thermometer, for example. So we said analog computer is that type of computer that has the capability to be able to perform operation on data that are what continuous in nature. So we said analog computer are used primarily to measure physical units like voltage, pressure, electric current, temperature, and convert them into what digits. So it simply means that an analog computer has the capability to, to measure. Measure in the sense that because there are variation over time. So it simply means that an analog computer works with time. So as long as there are variation in time, then the analog computer is expected to have different treatment over time. So, and that's what the analog computer uh, does. So it is also used to measure and perform arithmetic calculations on, of numbers, the length of an object, or an, uh, the amount of voltage that passes through a point in an electric cycle. We use analog, so maybe, um, maybe in the case of uh, rain, for example, we want to measure um, the volume of rain that dropped from the sky. We use a barometer, it is an analog computer. So a computer that has the capability to be able to operate or do some computation based on continuous data is what we call an analog uh, computer. So analog computer obtain all their data from some measurement. So it's, they operate, they, they, they obtain their data from some measurement. And because those data are continuous, there are variation with time depending on the nature of the data. And that's what analog computer. So in our shell, you can easily say that Analog computer is a type of computer that has the capability to perform operation on data sets that are continuous in nature. And a typical example could be your thermometer that measured the daily temperature, or even the human body temperature, or the barometer that measured the volume of um, um, rain that drops from the sky, or even your speedometer, because you agree with me that over time, if you are driving and the more you accelerate, your speedometer reading increases. And because you accelerate with time from uh, um, residual knowledge in physics, so and that is also um, uh, a, uh, that is also an analog computer. So analog computer installed on a petrol pump. So basically, a typical petrol pump too. You find out that when you go to, when you drive into a, fill, um, a, a, um, a, a filling station and you want to uh, maybe um, you want to maybe buy. Uh, your normal petrol from the filling station. What the petrol attendant does is that they bring out the, a device called the nozzle and they dip it into the compartment in your car where your uh, the tank where the tank resides, 
and over time all you need to then oh i want to buy xyz amount so you find out that the reading is taken based on the continuous nature of the petrol that is being dispensed at that point in time so there are co some component of the normal dispensing uh, fuel pump some component of it is analog because when you dispense you dispense continuously over a specific time so and that's what analog so that could be also be a typical example of analog computer now the second category is the digital computer so the digital computer um as the name suggests a digital computer represents the uh, digital component uh, computer letters numeric values or any other special symbols now what does that connote it simply means that a digital computer is a type of computer that can perform operation on values that are discrete in nature Discrete in the sense that values that are specific, that are not continuous. So, for example, 2 plus 2 is 4. That is discrete. It is not continuous. It is specific. So, so a digital computer has the capability to operate on values that are discrete in nature. So, a digital computer runs on electronic signals. And the binary numerical method or binary system of zeros and 1, or in a calculator, as, as a typical example could be a calculator. So, you have um, your calculator to be a digital computer. And the computer system itself is a digital computer, is a digital machine, is a digital, comp uh, is a digital machine. Now, why is it a digital machine? It is a digital machine. The normal computer system we use in every in our everyday activity is a digital machine, or the one we go about with is a digital machine. Now, why is it a digital machine? It's a digital machine because the computer system um, cannot relate with our language. Let me put it that way. So, it is whatever we feed into the computer system is converted to the native language of the computer system via some program that serves as an intermediary between us, the user, and the computer system. So we feed in, we, our input goes into the computer system, a program converts it into the native language of the computer system, which is zeros and one. So you, you find out that in a digital, a digital representation of uh, a digital computer will be zeros and one. So you, for example, in logic science, we say, oh, when you, are, when you have zero, it means you are in the off state. When you have one, it means you are in the on state. So, and digital device generally modulate between these two voltage levels. Is, is that is in the off state or in the off state, as, as the case may be. Now, it can perform arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So, all of these operations are what are a simple calculator. So, the normal simple calculator that we all know perform. So, we can do arithmetic operations. We can do... Uh, arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, division on in using our simple calculator. Even our, our computer system that we go about with, there's a component, there's a utility software there, I, part of the accessories that when you go, you just type calculator on your computer system, it pops up for you and you can make use of that particular calculator. So to, to us, what we get to see are the normal digits, maybe from 1 to 10, from, from 1 to, uh, from 0 to 9. But the computer system might not be able to relate with it. So, but at the back end, you have the computer system converting those digits into a series of binary digits. And those binary digits, what we now get to see as human is the pictorial representation of those binary digits. And we get to see them as decimal number. So these are more uh, some of the things we're going to discuss in this particular class um, later on in this course. So most computers are available in the market today, like I said, are what? Digital computer. They are digital computer because, for example, if you if you ask somebody, oh, what's the type of computer you are using? Oh, I'm using HP. Oh, I'm using Exa. I'm using uh, Lenovo. All of the computers that you have readily available are digital computer because they are, have the capability to be able to perform operation on values that are discrete uh, in nature. So examples of digital computer could be the likes of your calculator, your laptop, your smartphone, your tablet, and um, even some of your work clock are digital in nature. Some work clocks are digital. So even your normal wristwatch too, if it is a digital type, all you get to see are the numbers, the digits between 0 and 9. So And it changes over time. So just know that for a digital computer, it's a type of computer that has the capability to perform operation on values that are discrete in nature. What are discrete values? Discrete values are numbers. For example, if I say 8 plus 8, 8 plus 6 is 16. It is discrete. It is specific. So they are not continuous, as the case may be when we talk about analog. Now, the third category is what we call the hybrid computer. Now, the hybrid computer, when you say something is hybrid, it simply means it's, it's, it's more or less 
like a device that combines several functionalities together. So, and that's what hybrid computer is. So, we said the hybrid computer is a combined complex computer unit built using both analog and digital properties and united by a single control unit. Now, what does that mean? It simply means that an hybrid computer is a type of computer that combines the functionality of an analog computer and as well as a digital computer. So it simply means that an hybrid computer can perform the function of an analog computer and as well as perform the function of a digital uh, computer. So the purpose of designing an hybrid computer is to provide functions and features that can be found on both analog and digital uh, devices. So for ex a typical example could also be um, uh, the fuel dispenser. So the fuel dispenser, for example, you're walking, you're driving to a, a, a filling station and you talk to the fuel attendant that, oh, I need you to dispense a fuel that worth maybe 5,000 Naira. Now, what does the fuel attendant do? The input into the dispensing machine is digital because he or she will just go to the machine and punch 5,000 Naira, 5,000. That's the input into it is digital in nature. But the output, now what the fuel attendant does is picks up the nozzle, dip it into a compartment in your car, then the fuel dispenses over time depending on that amount that she has keyed in, which is, a, which is which the component is digital. So it dispenses over time. And immediately gets to that 5,000. Because it is programmed, then the, dispense, the machine stops dispensing. So we find out that a typical dispensing machine or a typical fuel dispensing machine um, is that the, the input is digital, but while the output is what? Analog in nature. So the goal behind creating a hybrid computer is to create a kind of a kind of work unit that offers the best of both types of work computer. Yes, we, we, it would be lovely if we have a system that can perform the function of analog and at the same time perform the function of a digital computer. So when I need to do anything that it is analogous in nature, then I will use the same computer. I don't need to get a spare or another computer. When I need to do an operation or perform an operation that is digital in nature, then I'll still use my same machine. So, and that's what hybrid computer has come to um, um, deliver for us. So you have an hybrid computer that has the functionality of both analog computer and that of a digital uh, computer. So hybrid computer is extremely fast when deriving equation, even when those calculations are incredibly well complex. Yes, because they have, uh, you can imagine uh, using um, an hybrid computer to solve uh, um, very complex mathematical equation. So, because they, they, they have the capability or they, they have the capac capacity to be able to um, 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 speed up the rate of uh, process and, and at the end, you get your, your results. And that's what the hybrid computer. So, they are very good in solving um, uh, mathematical equations. So, I've explained this particular example that a normal uh, dis dispens fuel dispensing machine is an hybrid computer because the input is digital in nature and the output is um, analog uh, in nature. So, so that takes us to the 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 discussion for for today. So, I'll, I'll, for us to be able to um, evaluate what we what I've discussed, so I'm going to be giving you some uh, quiz. So, the first question is: Which of the following is not a type of computer based uh, on what we've discussed? Based on the type. So we, we have here, we have remote, we have hybrid, we have analog, and we have digital. Now, from our discussion, you find out that the hard one out here is remote because I did not discuss any computer type of computer to be remote. So, so the remote is, is odd. So, and the likes of our hybrid computer that we said is a type of computer that has the functionalities of an analog computer and as well as a digital computer. Then, as for analog computer, we said it is a type of computer that has the capability to perform operation on variables or values that are continuous in nature. So it's a type of computer. And as for the digital computer, we said there are types of computer that have the capability to be able to process data that are discrete in nature. So a typical example could be a calculator. Now, question two, a computer that operates on digital data. So what kind of computer operates on digital data? Now, as the name implies, Digital data, definitely, I'm sure what goes on your, at the back of your mind is that, oh, it is uh, a digital computer. So if what you've chosen is digital computer, 
you are very very uh, correct then question three so we said in an attempt to process data a computer system will undergo the following stages so what are those stages so if you're able to define what a computer system is i'm sure you will not have difficulties in responding to this giving the right um, answer so more or less like a recap we said a computer system is an electronic device that accept input data process the data under a given program control and give a meaningful output as information so it simply means that the computer system we expected to go through the input the process and the output stage so so we expect the computer system to go through the input process and the output. so the one that is odd out is so uh, maybe I should have reframed the question which of these is not part of the stages so the one that is odd out is the storage there's nothing like storage stage so you have the input stage uh, you have the uh, process stage and you have the output stage so it is the storage that is hard in in this uh, among the responses so a sequence of steps followed by the computer system in solving problem is known as algorithm true or false now I've explained what an algorithm is so I said for every task you want to perform what do you do or for every task you want the computer system to perform let me put it that way so it simply means that you have to write a set of instructions that you you want the computer system to adhere to and those set of instructions are what we call algorithm so we said an algorithm is a finite set of instruction that the computer system follow or obey in order to execute a given task so it is finite in the sense that you can count the number of steps that are required to solve a particular problem so our response to this particular question will be true yes it is true because an algorithm is a finite set of instruction that computer system follow or obey in order to execute a given task so so i hope you understood the entire discussion in this particular class so the last slide will be more or less like a summary to capture what we've discussed so far so in the class in the course of our discussion we define what a computer system is we said it's an electronic device that has the capability to accept input data and what it does with the data is that it processes the data under a given program control and give a meaningful output as information so we've defined what a computer system is we said it will, it will impute it will accept input data it will process those data under a given program control and give an output like you saw in the question that what are the stages that are required for a typical computer system a computer system will go through the input stage the process stage and the output stage then we also attempt to uh, a computer system attempt to process data that are fed into it using three stages so you have the the input stage the process stage and the output stage so a computer system can be classified based on purpose data process and size so we've said that in, when you want to classify computer system we classify them based on the purpose they are serving at that point in, point in time we said we have the general purpose and the special purpose and the computer system can also be classified based on the type we said we have the analog computer the digital computer and as well as the hybrid computer and also a computer system can also be classified based on size so it can also be classified based on size where you have the supercomputer the mainframe computer the mini computer the micro computers as we saw in the slide then a computer that perform operation on data that are continuous in nature is what we call the analog computer so data that are continuous in nature are what we call the analog computer and the computer and um, a computer system that perform um, operation on values that are discrete in nature are what we call the digital computer and we said a computer that combines the functionalities of both analog and digital computer together are what we call the hybrid computer so i hope you've enjoyed the class if there are questions um, that you need to ask you can actually drop those questions on the chat and i'll get back to you thank you for listening <music>